Our fifth and final case study will be on Patty Hearse. Um, this is a very interesting one, and it'll be interesting to see how you guys figure out what might have been the issue um, with Miss Hearst. Um, Patty Hearst, just a quick background profile, she didn't kill anybody. She was involved in a bank robbery at gunpoint in 1974 in San Francisco. She did fire a weapon at civilians and co-conspirators fled the scene. Carjacking was also involved in this um, incident in San Francisco. She um, referred to herself as Tanya. Um, she um, was working with associates of the what they what at the time was called the Symbolese Liberation Army, the SLA, um, which was a radical um, group. Um, sh her associates did shoot two men when they entered the bank to rob it, and footage shows some interesting and debatable things as to what happened with her, and you'll see that probably in the biography that follows. Um, some people felt that she was being coerced to participate in this robbery. There is some surveillance video at the time that showed that maybe her associates were holding a gun at her. Um, but later in court, she did admit that she did this all voluntarily. Um, she was um, later kind of, some people believe that she really wasn't a, a willful participant in these robberies. Others believe that she was. Um, weeks after the robbery, she was in a van while her partners went into a store. They stole some socks. The owner fought with them outside and then Hearst opened fire across the street. Um, due to this commotion, again, leading to evidence that she was a willful participant. Um, she was kidnapped by this group. This is what began the whole thing. She um, was a um, granddaughter of a very wealthy individual, William Randolph Hearst, who was a newspaper magnate at the time. Um, and of course, um, the issue was ransom money. Um, so at the time of her kidnapping, she was 18. She had an apartment at the UC Berkeley um, um, complex. Um, she was beaten unconscious. Shots were fired from a machine gun and the group that kidnapped her was the Symbionese Liberation um, Army um, that held her. Um, while she was held into captivity, this is where she was believed to have sympathies with the SLA. Um, and that the Hearst family had some very politically powerful friends and um, they wanted um, to have the Hearst family influence the, the leaders in our country to release some of their members that were being held in prison. And of course, they were asking for ransom money because of her family's wealth. Um, what was this group? The SLA it was a student group. Um, that was formed on the UC Berkeley campus. Its original um, function was for the protection of black inmates in prison, um, but it used some very radical extreme measures. Very similar, remember this was back in the 70s, this could also be looked at as some of the groups that have formed today in the 2020s um, also. They're very similar in a lot of their beliefs and natures. Um, the leader of the SLA was a gentleman by the name of Donald DeFries. He was the only African American in the group, whereas most were women. Um, treated the group like a military, and he as uh, himself as kind of a field marshal general type of uh, leader. So very, very rigid and strict. Um, when she was first kidnapped, she was bound and blindfolded and kept in a closet. She had her life threatened repeatedly. Um, she was later given a flashlight to read political reports that the SLA provided her, and she was subject over and over again during her incarceration with the SLA to propaganda lectures, etc. Was that brainwashing? Don't know. Um, she was basically told that if she didn't join the movement, um, she would be killed. Um, so she did admit that she joined um, and wanted to fight with the SLA and then she was you know basically released from her confinement in the closet etc. 
Um, she was there after that. She was trained how to use a weapon. Um, she um, was, you know, basically um, sexually assaulted repeatedly by SLA members. And eventually um, she was allowed to join this organization. Very similar, in my opinion, to what gangs do to initiate members into the gang. Um, she was originally thought to be dead um, from her kidnapping. Nobody had heard from her or the, and the demands had stopped coming to the family for ransom um, until they um, found, um, you know, until she committed these different bank robberies and she was seen on video to be doing this in some of the statements that um, she had, um, had said um, both to the press and later during her trial. Um, so during this, let me back up just a little bit here. Um, but at one point they did have a shootout and they attempted to arrest SLA members. They figured Hearst was present and she was able to escape. Um, she was with the SLA for over a year, but finally was captured in San Francisco during a failed bank robbery attempt, I believe. So the, based upon all of that, which was pretty intensive and over several years of time, um, it was seen that Patty Hearst was officially brainwashed. Um, she was suffering from something called the Stockholm Syndrome. This is the syndrome where uh, a victim starts to identify and relate to their captors. Um, but that was the only diagnosis that she may have had. Did she have a personality disorder? Was it antisocial or was it one of the other personality disorders that we talked about, such as um, borderline or dependent or avoidant? I'm going to leave that up to you to try to decide what you think um, she may have had. Um, but following her arrest, she was convicted for in to 35 years of prison. She only served about two years of that time. At the time, the president of the United States, Jimmy Carter, um, commuted her sentence. Commute, commutation simply means that you have served enough time, but you're still found guilty. Under the law, it wasn't until later that President Clinton totally pardoned her um, from her from her crimes. 